uh, you all must be knowing about Sherlock Holmes. Some of you might have read almost every book of his. Uh, there is a book, there is a story called Red Headed League where there is a bank robbery which take which was to take place which Sherlock Holmes prevents. But in that, uh, there is a person working in a pawnbroker shop, uh, Vincent Spaulding, and uh, essentially that guy Spaulding. What he does is he uh, he is he is the culprit. Now, the owner, the pawnbroker, Mr. Wilson, he employed him for half the wages. Some for some reason, this assistant he is willing to come for half the wages as an assistant. Now, when Wilson comes to Holmes for help, Holmes asks him that okay, you know, he comes for half the wages. Why? Now, this is the step of reasoning. Holmes says it is obvious, but then it's not so obvious to us. So why why would somebody work for half the wages? Let's take our example. I mean, our life. Human nature is to go for a fair wage. Nobody would work for half the wage if, if you know market wage is what everybody wants. Okay, that is human nature. Why would somebody work for half the wage? Is it possible that he was inexperienced? It's his first job. He's just too young. He's trying to learn the trade. Wilson says he is in his thirties. Sort of you know seems to have experience. He's not definitely not his first job. So that is a counter evidence. Then, is he working for a brand? If you work for a big company, then you work for a particular brand, which is uh, so big that it will be useful experience, useful on your CV. No, this guy shops at a very small shop. He is struggling himself. But brand is not the reason why uh, an assistant would work for half the wages. Is he incompetent? He is all so stupid that he can work only for half the wages. Nobody would pay him full wage. Could that be the reason? Not really, because the owner says he is excellent in his work. You know, he is a master. So that possibility also goes. Is he trying? Is there an attractive girl in the shop that this guy is trying to? So let me work for half the wages and see what I can do. Is that the reason? This Wilson is a widower. There is some very small girl, some fourteen-year-old girl who cooks for him and keeps the house clean. That can't be the reason why. Uh, that can be the motive for an assistant to uh, join at half the wages. Is there a plan to steal? Is there any valuable in the shop that is of such value that somebody would work for half the wages to steal that? That is also negative because he has a few objects, but his business is not doing well. He says there is nothing expensive in my shop. Then Sherlock Holmes comes to the conclusion that there is a very strong motive for that fellow, which is in Sherlock Holmes' view. Most likely to be a very negative, uh, a very um, sort of dark kind of a motive, and then there are many ways in which he guesses that this guy is about to rob a bank, which is opposite uh, the shop, and by digging a digging a tunnel inside the shop, from inside the shop, it will go to the bank. And this story was written in 1890 or so. In 2014, we had a robbery in Haryana in Sonipat, exactly on the same lines. Ditto. The plot was exactly the red-headed league plot. Somebody took over a building which was a sort of uh, in a damaged state near a bank, dug a 125 feet tunnel in under the ground into Punjab National Bank, which is on the other side. Just broke into the locker and stole some 72 lockers overnight. Okay. The plot is exactly the same as what uh, was given in the Red Hair Lee, without all the embellishments and all. But uh, so, in a sense, um, reality followed fiction here. Sherlock Holmes' detection is also uh, very similar to what uh, you know the others were doing. That okay, now what is you you take up? This is how these people do. There is an observation. There is a puzzlement. In Sherlock Holmes' case, why is this guy working for half the wages? Then you come up with some reason, and then you remove it because that can't be the reason. Okay, and then you remove one by one various reasons, and then finally you say that okay, now given that all the other reasons, it is not a plan, it, there is nothing to steal, there is no girl in the shop, and he is not a uh, he is not a, a young guy looking for experience, and he is not incompetent. given that we have removed all these reasons the, the what is happening is that there is some dark reason that we don't know why this guy is doing so removal of possibilities that's what 
uh, Sherlock Holmes does. In some sense, that is what uh, uh, a historian does. You know, why why does this happen? To remove the possibilities, then you have you are you are narrowing down the possibilities to a few, and then you are able to inference. Okay, so uh, any puzzlement, if you are puzzled, that needs an explanation. This is not normal, so that needs an explanation, and then evidence or counter evidence for explanation. For example, what Ronald Ross did with mosquitoes also happens with plague. Whenever uh, there was a plague, people saw that as rats population increased, the plague arrived. Okay, there was some correlation between rats and plague. What it was, it took many years, centuries for us to know. But then, wherever plague was found, wherever you know any area where plague was. Sort of uh, destroying people. Uh, that place had lot of rats. So then, at some point of time, you know, it was taken further and unpacked, and then finally we arrived at uh, a Xenia pestis a bacteria, which was carried through rats in the bubonic plague. All of that we know now. In fact, the Great Plague in London got uh, over because there was a fire. In the fire. All the rats died, or most of the rats died. You can see. Then the fire automatically put an end to the plague that was ravaging the city. Okay, so the London fire, which was another kind of destruction, was responsible for ending the plague. So there are many connections. So you make an observation. Okay, that this is how it is. So if there is a counter evidence, you look for alternative cause. Okay, then there are competing explanations. It could be, for example, in the case of mosquito, it is could be it could be a stench, it could be a worm, it could be mosquito. Then you look for what is best explanation. You do a few experiments, and then you are able. Okay, now this is the most possible explanation for this. Then this is important only in the absence of a counter evidence or a better explanation. You conclude beyond reasonable doubt that this is the most possible uh, best. This is the best explanation we have for this uh, event or for this process. Okay, this is what Sherlock Holmes says. It's a little fuzzy kind of stuff. Uh, once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. 